Hey guys, this is Jason, and in this Tech Tips video, I wanted to talk about the fundamentals of brushed DC motor controllers. If you're looking at motor controllers, trying to select the right motor controller to go with your brushed DC motor, some of the specs that are going to be most important are going to be the voltage range that it can uh, handle, as well as the max current per channel. Pay careful attention to the stall current. The stall current is how much current, how much power it's going to draw in the worst case scenario if you can completely lock up that motor so it can't turn. And you want to compare that to the max current per channel on your motor controller. So if you look at the max current per channel, there's usually going to be a max current per channel continuous and a max current per channel peak. The peak, just like it sounds, is is how much max current it can handle for a very short burst of time, whereas continuous is how much it can, can, can handle continuously. Um, and so the best practice is to have a motor controller it, that can handle the motor's stall current continuously if you want to get in a situation where you're never going to blow out your motor controller. Next I wanted to talk a little bit about how exactly a motor controller controls the speed of a motor. Um, it obviously it's going to control the direction by reversing the polarity that's being sent to the motor. But the actual speed, there are a couple different ways you can do it. And any motor controller these days is going to work the same way. They're going to work by adjusting a PWM signal. Um, so you may be familiar with PWM signals from the world of servos. Um, PWM stands for pulse width modulation. And it can be used as a signal, like in the world of servos, to send essentially code that some sort of circuit board is decoding to determine what you want to do. Or it can be used uh, basically just as a way of transmitting a certain amount of power, like in motor controllers. So essentially what it's doing is it's instead of using um, little pulses of energy to, to match up with a certain predetermined code, it's sending these pulses of energy uh, to make the motor spin faster or slower. So instead of sending a very small voltage, volt, small current signal, it's sending the voltage that you're actually using on the motor with as much current as the motor is drawing. While simply adjusting the voltage that goes to a brushed DC motor will also adjust the end result speed. Um, using PWM is better, and here's why. If you can imagine you have a skateboard with a target on it, and you're shooting that with a tennis ball gun, it's shooting these tennis balls at that target to make the, the skateboard move along. In your control test, you're shooting it at a particular speed, you go across the track, and you have a certain amount of time it took. Now let's say you want to take twice as much time and go half as fast. Your options are, either to reduce the speed that the balls are coming out or reduce the frequency with which you're shooting them. If you do the first, you reduce the speed um, to half of what the original speed was, and in the end, over the course of a mile, you'll have successfully gone half as fast. Now, if you do it a second time and you reduce the frequency, you'll have the same end result in the sense that it'll take twice as long, you'll have reduced the speed to half of what the original control test was. But the difference is if you encounter resistance along that track, say there's mud on the track or something, if you're shooting the balls at half the speed, you have less power. So even though in the end they both have the same amount of speed overall, the situation where you're reducing the frequency but you're hitting it with just as much power every time is going to be a better option because you're going to maintain your torque over the course of that track. So if you hit some resistance, you hit some mud or something, it's being hit by those balls at, at full speed, um, even though it's happening half as often. And that's why uh, we use PWM signals, sort of like an electric jackhammer. It's You're hitting that motor with tiny pulses. So if you have a 12 volt source, and instead of turning that down to 6 volts to go half as fast, you're hitting it with 12 volts half as often and you're you're getting the same result in speed but you have almost as much torque as just com connecting it straight to the battery. Now most motor controllers will have a myriad of features that we didn't go over in this fundamentals video such as regenerative braking or working with encoders and so on and so forth, various ways to control them. Um, if you want to go through and compare those features and those bells and whistles go to servocity.com for more information. Mm -hmm.